from the NBC newsroom in New York. President Roosevelt said in a statement today that the Japanese have attacked the Pearl Harbor, Hawaii, from the air. I repeat that. President Roosevelt says that the Japanese have attacked Pearl Harbor in Hawaii from the air. This bulletin came to you from the NBC newsroom in New York. Good day. Welcome back to Mike's Radio Repair and Restoration. This is the beginning of a series of restoring and repairing a Helicrafters S38, the original. And when I say that, there are quite a few different versions. This was uh, the one that came with an actual built-in BFO of all the S38s. This one's kind of most desirable because there's a modification that can be done to the BFO that makes this unit receive side bend very well. And we're going to get into that later on in this uh, in this series of video. Um, the biggest thing with the S38 is, is there is a safety problem with it. And I'm sure a lot of people have heard about it, maybe don't fully understand what's going on. So I'm going to explain and show through a series of diagrams what the safety issue is and how we're going to fix it. Um, and if you can see, you know, it kind of sort of resides around this power plug. I'm not sure how well you can see that, but somebody has obviously put another cord on it, I'm going to say maybe back in the 1960s, and a hardware store plug. And if you please notice the plug is both of the pins are exactly the same size. And this is kind of sort of where the problem starts. So we're going to get into that. But uh, this old girl here um, has come to me. Uh, it is not operational. I'm not even going to bother to plug it in, to be honest with you. I just know from the previous owner, who said it did nothing for him. <clears throat> so um, we're going to get this working like it was new again. So with that, we're going to get into the uh, the problem with the S38. We're going to look at it, like I said, a few series of diagrams. So uh, um, just hang tight and let me get that ready for you. Understanding the uh, problem with the S38 comes down to understanding some other points here. You probably recognize these as your standard wall outlets for 120 volts or uh, kind of standard now in North America. Uh, but it wasn't always this way. Back in the 50s and 60s, I remember as a younger kid, these two tab terminals were the same size. But now one is larger than the other. And this new configuration is called a polarized plug. And we can kind of sort of see one here. We have uh, one of these tab terminals larger than the other. So we have ground, we have neutral is the larger tab, and hot, which is a smaller tab. Well, we go over here and we can see that if we were to measure from ground to the larger tab, we should have zero volts. And if we measure from ground to the smaller tab, we will have 120 volts. So this is the way that you can confirm that your house is wired correctly. I've actually been in houses that were wired backwards, and I actually talked to old-time electricians who said it didn't matter which way you wired them up. It, it all was the same. But as you can clearly see here, it's not the same. Not the same at all. So one of the things towards making your S38 safe, making sure that your plugs are wired correctly and understand what's going on here, and uh, these new modern polarized plugs here help greatly. You can see here that... Uh, one terminal is larger than the other. This one here is the neutral terminal. And this one here is the uh, hot terminal of 120 volts. I think you can see that. And you can see here on our plug here that we have a larger and a smaller. And this will only plug in that way. You can't plug it in the wrong way. It's only going to plug in one way. And that's one of the steps that we need to do for our S38 is make sure we're feeding it properly. So you're going to need to check your house to make sure it's wired properly. And if you don't know how to do that, you can have a licensed electrician come in and look at it for you. Um, if you have a, uh, a multimeter, you can do it yourself, but just understand you accept the responsibilities uh, of doing that. Um, please be cautious. Um, don't want to see anybody get hurt. So, uh, but I mean, you can see back in the day, here is an older style plug. Uh, it's got a cloth 
maybe from the late 30s, early 40s, a cloth exterior on it. And again, that's a hardware store type plug. But both of the terminals are the same size. And this is where the problem goes with the S38. Is you could plug it in this way, or you could plug it in that way. And in the next few frames, you'll understand why that's a huge problem and why that the newer polarized plugs sort that out. So hang on tight and we'll look at the next we'll look at the next um, drawing. Okay, so here is the power input to the S38. Um, and you can see here is the power plug. And notice it's not denoted with a polarity at all. And the big thing is, is this here. This is ground to the chassis. So if you were to plug this in so this upper lead was connected to the hot, that means your chassis would have 120 volts present on it. That's starting to get dangerous. Um, there are some rubber grommets that separate the chassis from the metal outer shell, but those grommets can go bad. And it's possible to have 120 volts present itself on the case of the radio. Another thing is, is this bypass cap. And like all old-fashioned wax paper bike or capacitors, they go bad. And again, you could have leakage part of 120 volts or all of 120 volts present on the case so if you turn unplug the plug and turn it around and plug it in well the safety level goes up but that's it it's a juggernaut you know with an unpolarized plug you you could be livening up the chassis with a you know 120 volts and you could be creating quite a shock hazard so i'll show you how we're going to fix this in the next frame here so this is my fix to an S38. Now we're going to use a modern polarized plug, and that's the big one. And you can see in here now, going back to our, our first original slide, that we had the neutral and the hot. The hot is where the 120 volt signal is. And so what I've done here is I have turned this around so that I have 120 volts going through straight through to the rectifier tube as opposed to going to the chassis. I have the chassis set up as neutral, um, and I have added right off the bat, the first thing when 120 volt and the hot lead comes in is a fuse. That's step number one. And I've switched this line rather than the chassis line. This way, when you shut the radio off, you know, the power is stopping at the switch and it's not running through the chassis or anywhere else. Um, I've also added next class safety cap. Now, people call them a safety cap. I don't know how much safety they really provide, but they do provide a modicum of noise filtering, um, meaning that if your wife starts an electric blender in the kitchen, it can help strip out some of that noise. And it also keeps any noises set inside the set to itself. So it's a little bit of a filter. Um, this Bypass cap to the case is 0.25 bypass ca cap to case. Of course, again, is wax paper. Uh, we're going to replace it with something much more modern and much more safe. So as you can see now here, if we were using a polarized plug, we're always going to get our 120 volts on this lead. It's going to be fused. The switch has been moved. A safety cap has been added. Um, so this will prevent, with the proviso, your house is wired properly. 120 volts from reaching the case. So that's going to be the first step of the restoration of this radio is to um, update how we feed it. Um, so let's look at them in comparison for a second. So we can see the old one was a non polarized plug. The possibility of putting 120 volts onto the chassis and maybe into the case. There's a 50-50 shot, depending upon the way that you plugged that old plug in. Um, and uh, this potentially old leaky cap here. And imagine if you were putting 120 volts on this lead. It would be unswitched and the radio would be live all the time inside. Um, 
kind of sort of a little bit dangerous. But anyway, so if we go back here now, this is the new setup here now with the neutrally uh, and hot leads polarized plug with one terminal bigger than the other. So it always gets plugged in the right way. It's fused to protect safety uh, of the operator and of course the unit if something bad happens it's better to have a fuse blow than to cook the radio or cook a part that you can no longer get we have a safety cap do a little noise filtering for us and we're going to replace this um, bypass cap here to the case with more modern safety unit so this addresses the safety concerns of an s38 of course you can go further with an isolation transformer, and you can look that up and see how that works. But I mean, if you've wired the radio in this fashion and your house is wired properly, the radio now becomes safe. So it's something that you need to consider when you're operating an S38, you gotta make sure you know where you're plugging it in, it's a trusted source, and away you go. Once you get this done, um, and the radio restored and operating, it's a nice little radio to use. I mean, it's not, um, serious communication grade receiver but uh, it's great for shortwave listening and uh, um, with the sideband modification of this early unit that i've got it's it's great for listening to the amateur bands and uh, so it's worth putting the effort into and uh, so with that uh, if you have any questions on this please feel free to leave questions below the video i'll uh, do my, my my best to answer them uh, but with this we're going to begin taking the radio apart take the knobs and case off and we're going to start with this um, modification. Then from there, we're going to go on and start looking at capacitors and uh, resistors and tubes and whatnot. And uh, we'll take it step by step and we'll make videos. That'll probably be in a series of videos as we go along. So uh, the next step here is we'll, uh, we'll get the S38 apart and uh, We'll see what's what. I've not had a chance to look inside it, so it definitely should be inter interesting. Okay, so in order to take the case off this, real simple, these knobs have got Allen set screws that hold them all. Um, sometimes they're slot, slot screwdriver type of set screws, and sometimes they're Allen. You just never know. I've not ever seen Bristol spline uh, used on an S38, but in this case, this one is um, Allen's. Um, so make sure that you use a can of compressed air, blow all the gunk and dust of years of sitting out of the set screws. Make sure you use the right size hex key. Make sure you get it all the way to the bottom of the set screw. The last thing you want to do is strip one of those. That's really kind of a nasty bit of a business. There's one, two, three, four extra screws to come out on the front. And one little thing in the back here. This is the plug for the speaker. On this one, it's an early one. It's got this nice little plug that plugs directly into the chassis behind this tube here, which you can simply wiggle it out, and the chassis and the speaker are now separate. On the later models, they've cheaped out a little bit. You have to actually unsolder the wire from the speakers, but there's a few screws on the bottom, then two in these corners, and the chassis will come out. So that's going to be my next step. Okay, so here we are, S38, cover off. And as you can see, it's pretty dirty. Nothing unusual. We'll get her cleaned up. We'll get her fixed up. If you haven't seen um, my how to identify capacitors video or my affordable uh, tools and equipment video, maybe now is a good time to take a look at those. We're going to flip this over and have a, a look at the underside of this and uh, see if anything's ever been done to it. And, uh, but uh, the top, as you can see here, is pretty dirty. The dial cords are bad. We'll clean them up. We'll put new dial cords on, uh, but we won't do that until we get it basically operating again. Um, but anyways, this is pretty typical for an S38 been stored in somebody's basement or garage for God knows how long, but uh, we'll see if we can fix her up and bring her back to life. Let's just hang on a second. Let's look at, at the underside that we've all been waiting for. Uh, an initial inspection on this, it's all original except for one thing. The filter capacitors have been changed. This is a three-section capacitor, but it should be a four. And this is what the original four, which was in the S38, should look like. 
we've got a ground and then we've got four different capacitive leads here. <clears throat> this one's only got three and the ground is in the back. And they've added the other one into the audio tube here. Uh, but they put a big one in. It really should be 20 at 150 volts or so. And uh, it's, they put 40 in. Not a huge problem. Changed the audio quality a little bit, but nothing serious. But uh, all of these big old pa paper and foil capacitors have to come out and be replaced. All of them. But that's not what my first stop is. My first stop is going to be dealing with the power, putting a fuse um, block in it, um, making it safe, like described in the earlier video here. Um, so I consider this step one when I'm restoring a radio. I call it power supply and audio tube. And I take the audio tube with it because there's always a an electrolic uh, in the audio tube. So when I'm changing up the filtering electrolic, I always do the audio tube too. So I'll do all the power supply things. I'll do put the new cord in, put the safety capacitor in, wire it properly so the chassis is not hot anymore. Um, and I'll deal with the capacitor that's on the audio tube. And I'll go around the audio tube and I'll make sure that all of the resistance is proper as well as replace any other smaller capacitors that are with the auto tube. So I consider that step one. Step two will be going on to re replace all of these big old wax capacitors. And we were talking about some of the capacitors that you don't change. You can see them here. This is a domino uh, looking ordeal and it's a silver mica. There's another one here and another one there. And there'll be some up front here and underneath the tuning coils. So, in general, I don't see anything that's been butchered. I don't see anything missing. I don't see anything burnt. Looks all original, except for this long time ago. I'm going to guess looking at this, maybe the 19, the late 50s or early 60s, these might have been replaced. The original probably went bad and sent it in for service. So that's going to be uh, our project now is to do step one, which is do with the power supply and the audio tube caps. Um, step two, as I say, are going to be the uh, big foil caps. So that's it for this video. So uh, I'm going to go to work and I'm going to do the uh, power supply section exactly as the drawing showed. I presented to you earlier in this video. Um, and once I get all those steps done, we'll go through them here step by step, what I replaced and where things got wired to. So thanks for tuning in. Um, look forward to part two. Please subscribe. You'll get notification when part two comes out. If you haven't seen my other video insofar as identifying these capacitors or affordable tools and a test equipment you need to do this yourself, please watch those. So until the next video, we'll see you again. The thousands of Nazis that are falling into Russian hands confirm earlier Russian reports that German troops are surrendering wholesale and that the morale of the Nazi army in Russia has deteriorated. About a year ago today, Hitler, with a great deal of fanfare, took over supreme command of the German armies. The best Christmas gift the United Nations could receive is the assurance that he will not relinquish that command. As the new Russian offensive hammers and tears chunks out of the Germans, dispatches said that everywhere along the long Russian front, the Nazis are either in retreat, surrounded, or menaced on the flank. That perhaps is a bit on the optimistic side. But the Russians are holding on to what they've gained in the offensives at Stalingrad and west of Moscow.